You're listening to Mentoring Developers. And so that's very interesting. I found that most coding schools are using the Rails framework to teach programming. Is there a particular reason for that? I think partially because it is relatively easy to get started with. It's visual, which is helpful to a lot of people. Now, there's so many people that really won't respond to uh, the idea of building a command line calculator, for example, um, but will respond to the idea of building a web application. I think that in general, uh, there are a lot of people out there who are motivated by what you can do with programming and not by programming itself. And I've always been one of those people. Like, I like programming. I, I enjoy it. I'm good at it. Um, but the programming itself is not what I'm in this for. I'm in this for what it can do and the things that we can build. And so I think that the choice of a very visual, pretty you know, rapid development framework as a first uh, programming stack seems a little counterintuitive until you realize that uh, it is very goal oriented. If you want to build something, if you want to build a web application, then it's very motivating to start with something like rails because you can see that you are making progress towards the goal of the thing you want to build. Is that uh, the fact that rails has a very encouraging and supportive community that at least the impression that I have of it. Do you think that's a factor as well? Um, I think that like all open source communities, we've struggled with that, with, with being as, as open and welcoming to newcomers as I would like us to be anyway. But I think that we have the most, of all the technical communities, we have the most experience because we are the ones, uh, because as you said, a lot of these code schools, the ones that started five and six years ago were teaching Rails, and many of them still are. Uh, we have, we've had a lot of these new developers coming into our companies and into our community. And it's only more recently that other technical communities have also started getting these folks. And so I think we dealt with it for, uh, for a while before any of the other technical communities got to that level. And it's interesting. I, I was at RailsConf a couple of years ago, and I ran into a guy who did PHP. And I was like, oh, so are you, are you thinking about is your company thinking about switching to Rails? And he was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, um, so you do, are you interested in Rails as a side project thing, as hobbies? And he's like, well, no, not really. Not really interested in Rails or Ruby at all. <laughs> and I was like, you, you, you realize, right, that you're at RailsConf. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah, so the reason I'm here is that you have a track. We had just started doing tracks that year. We had a track about working with junior developers that we hadn't even really planned to have, but it had sort of, Based on the talks that we got, a lot of people wanted to talk about that area. And so we ended up making a little, I think it might have been maybe just three or four talks, less than a, less than a whole day track on working with junior developers. And that was enough for, uh, to convince his boss to send him to RailsConf, just, the, just those four talks. And he told me that he thought the first talk he saw, which was uh, a talk on onboarding junior developers, was worth the entire price of admission to the conference. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. And so it's great to have, a, you know, I think that the, the community that supports um, newcomers, we're still figuring out how to do it for sure. Like a, definitely the makeup of the people that come to our conferences has shifted. We got, um, last year, I think we had almost half of the people at the conference was our first conference ever. And um, from, you know, first Rails Conf, and for many of them, their first conference ever. And we see, we only see that increasing. I think that we are getting more and more folks in that are new. And so we need to figure out how to respond to that. We need to figure out how to get them in because these people have amazing experience, you know, may not be all in programming, <laughs> but they've got amazing experience in other areas and bringing them into our companies uh, has made the entire process richer because we get people with, uh, you know, if, you, if all you hire is people with computer science backgrounds or, or what I think of as sort of the traditional open source background, which is like the Mark Zuckerberg model, right, where you drop out of college and, and build your thing and just hack on open source and learn how to do it yourself. 
So we've got those two traditional backgrounds that you find a lot of, uh, at least in San Francisco and in various companies, through career change, contingent. And they're bringing a lot of really interesting and creative ideas. Thank you so much for listening. For show notes and transcripts, visit us at mentoringdevelopers.com. You're listening to Mentoring Developers.